Whoa, whoa, everyone, whoa. Can you hear all that noise in the background? Does it ever make you stressed out? You might be <laughs> But do you ever get real anxious or, or stressed out at, at the moment's notice? Could be because of background noise at work or walking down the street or even people arguing on TV. Does that bug you? How does that make you feel? Right, our heart races, we go a little crazy, we can't focus on what's important. And often, I don't know if, this, you, know, if you can relate to this, Maybe you walk in one room of the house and forget what you were there for. You know, why'd you go to the kitchen? Some people forget why they go to the bathroom. It's because of simple things that we get anxious. We either got something stressing us out, we can't focus, we lose sleep. There are so many things out there that make us crazy. Let alone politics, and everyone's always arguing over politics. Who cares? If you Taxes go up, make more money. I mean, that was the best advice ever given to me by my ex-father-in-law. Oh my goodness, prices are going up. I guess I'm going to have to make more money. Well, you're in the office with Joseph Skoda. I'm not necessarily talking to you about making more money at this time, but I'm asking you or giving some ideas to what do we do to avoid stress? Or what do we do when we are stressed out? How do we deal with our anxiety? Now, I thought about this a lot this week because this is Independence Day. Week, anyways. Fourth of July. Hear the fireworks going off in the background. And we know we're going to hear them not just at night, but all day long, probably for a week or two. And some of them are going to be illegal and more louder with the more bang than others. And it's going to affect us. Unless you're the one to shoot them off, and then you're having fun doing that. But how do we deal with that when we're stressed out? A lot of people turn, turn to the pipe. You know, hey, you know, I got to do something to smoke. It could, it could be a bomb, but just one way to lower your heartbeat and say, ah, let me relax. Life's good, right? So you, you're at the pipe, you're just looking around, and you keep your thoughts to yourself a little bit. You're figure, trying to figure out a way to meditate and avoid what's really going on around you. Try to avoid what's causing that stress to you to begin with. Now, we see crowds in the background. could be here. could be at a park. It could be in the streets. It could be in our own cars with someone next to us nagging. <laughs> you ever get someone nagging you and you're just like, oh, brother, I can't wait to drop you off? That happens. It could be your significant other, it could be your, your children, whatever it is. But often something just triggers something inside of us where we, our heart races. And maybe we get sweaty palms, maybe we don't know what we're doing. And if this smoking something doesn't work, a lot of us tend to drink. And believe it or not, most of us don't tend to drink water. Most of us tend to drink some form of alcohol. And this is water, you can trust me on that. Hmm, you know, I love it, but we don't need it all the time. But there are other ways to deal with stress. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about CBD oils. A lot of us, we know marijuana has THC. It often causes us um, well, the, the high. I mean, we drink to get high. We, we smoke to get high. Most of us smoke to get high to forget about reality, at least for a short period of time. But what about CBD oils? They're not designed to, to get us high. They're designed to help us relieve that stress, help us to relieve that anxiety. They help us do different things and not necessarily make us high. You can still function perfectly if you use it correctly. Now the problem, not, not just with this, but with smoking and drinking and even water, we often don't know when to stop. We often don't know when to slow down. We often don't think there's a problem. And that's almost everything in life. I mean, another way I deal with um, anxiety and stress is taking a vacation. Now, sure, I understand vacations can be expensive. They can be stressful. You're going to get that background noise in most cases, unless you have a VIP vacation club like I do. But we all need to find a way deep down inside 
that we can deal with the issues and, and live a peaceful life. Now, sure, maybe we want to <laughs> kick the dog or punch the wall or something like that, get a little physical and get the stress out. But that doesn't fix anything temporarily. So we should be taking those vacations. And I strongly recommend getting some CBD oils. You can get a THC free. And those of you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. You don't need to get high. You can take it under the tongue a few drops a day or, or rub it on different parts of your body to help. Uh, this is a pain reliever. Get rid of some of the back pain and some ankle pain that maybe you're dealing with. This stuff works well. I need it all. Contact me in the office and we'll get you the link to get that stuff for you. I, a lot of people smoke, but again, the smoking, the secondhand smoke affects everyone around them. And those smokers and those drinkers don't necessarily know how they're affecting everyone else. But when you're doing something in private, no one has to know about it, and you're feeling better, and you have a happiness about you, isn't that what it's all about? Is being happy and content with your own life without hurting anyone else? Now, if you're doing something illegal, and there's a lot of illegal things out there, I'm not going to touch on it, but boy, don't, don't break the law and don't hurt people just for your own happiness. It's our job to serve each other. We have a great idea about a product, a service, even doing your own show with social media shows. Brag about it. Tell others and say, yo, man, we got something pretty cool. Come check us out. I know a lot of you are watching me live streaming right now. It's pretty exciting. You see my poker shirt. And that's another way some people deal with stress. They might just mindlessly put money in the slot machine. $20, turns into $50, turns into $100. And sometimes they don't even realize they're just throwing the money away. Sure, every now and then you win a couple bucks, like, yeah, I've got it going on. But what happens over time? And you know, casinos are never going to stay in business if everyone wins all the time. We have to lose more so the casino can win. That's just the way life is. So I don't like to do slots a lot. I do like to play poker. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Now here's one of the keys to reducing some of that stress. Is going to the casino with a certain amount of money. I have $100. Win, lose, or draw, I'm not spending more than this $100. And then you know, and you've got to be ready to lose that 100 Because we still have to eat, we still have to pay our rent, we still need our car payments, insurance, whatever. So don't use your last hundred dollars on gambling, that's stupid. Don't use your last dollar in buying booze or something to smoke, that's stupid. We all need to find a way to make a living in this world and have a happy face and it's our job to make ourselves happy. I can't depend on partners like Maria Perez to make me happy, it's up to me. I can't rely on my significant other or even my kids, I mean, they're going to try to make me happy and try to give me that smile that I so desperately need. But deep down inside, it's me. Me. Only I can make myself happy or sad. If you're kicking me, if you're pushing me down, if you're stabbing me, if you're making fun of me, if you're, 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 you're. I can choose to be sad, angry, mad, glad, happy. That's it. I can choose to be fearful. If we're talking about fearful, that's a whole different conversation we want to have. But when we are fearful, whatever it is, we might be seeing shadows at night. <laughs> we might be daydreaming. We, we may lose track of what we're doing in our lives. We may be afraid, of our, afraid for our children, some of the decisions that they're making. And that darn right better affect you. That darn right better wake you up and say, oh my goodness, what am I doing? What can I do to do better so they don't get themselves in trouble? You and I can't, can only control someone else a little bit. We can lock them up. <laughs> of course, that's one way we can lie, cheat, and steal, and beg, and, and all those other things that try to keep our friends and family on the right track. But ultimately, it's up to them. So here's something I found by telling someone, hey, this is what you need to do, usually doesn't work. 
uh, leading by example, that works really well. If you have a weight problem, for instance, and your kid has a weight problem, uh, if, if I'm working on it, exercising, eating more healthy, my kid's going to pay closer attention to that. If I'm not always eating healthy or not always exercising, my kid's going to pay attention to that also. <laughs> so we are going to get stressed. We are going to uh, get a little bit out there, but we have to control our own feelings, our own ideas. And I'm telling you, find a vacation club, like the VIP Vacation Club. Find some oils. Find something that can help you get some inner peace. Whatever it is, we have to find a way to relax. And in our society, it's not always easy to relax. We have too many pressures around us. A lot of people work in two or three different jobs, going to school, don't know where the kids are because they're working two to three different jobs and going to school. So, but those are situations we often put ourselves in. Now, can you imagine if you actually slept at eight hours a day, how much energy you'd have throughout that day and throughout the week, and how better focused you can be even on your job? And I found that. What's... Once we stop chasing that dollar around, once we stop chasing uh, the ultimate buck and the treasures that we think is owed to us, and focus more on peace, peace of mind, serving others, we kind of get what we're looking for to begin with. And that may not be the riches, but that is the things that the riches can buy. We can accomplish so much more in this world if we just Take the focus off of us and focus on those around us. We need to find a way to get rid of those stressors and those pressures because every day we can wake up, we have to decide how we're going to feel. It's not going to change the society around us. We're still going to get that background noise. We're still going to get, we're still going to get pushed to one side or or push to a different side, or someone's going to tell us, well, this is what you should do. This is what I recommend. Darn it, you need to go after that promotion. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But why let someone else dictate that for you? I, I, in, on our social media shows, we connect you with a lot of different products and services of people we know very well and some of the products they have. And every now and then something might come out that like, well, uh, we don't agree with that anymore. So we'll take it off of our show and we'll promote something different. But if you don't feel safe or secure or, or trust something, hey, we live in a world of information. You want to find out just about, you know, CBD oil, for instance, look up CBD oil anxiety, CBD oil depression, CBD oil back pain, CBD oil menstrual camp, CBD oil pet care. Yes, even our pets get anxious, especially during fireworks season. Or when they see us sad, they get sad. But we need to all do our own due diligence and look it up ourselves. Don't say, well, uh, the, the TV said this is the best movie there ever was, so I had to go watch it. Or the newspaper said you need to, to, to buy stocks over here because you're going to be rich one day. May happen, it may not. But why are you trusting what someone's telling you when they're just trying to sell you their product, their service, their newspaper anyways? Look it up for yourself. You'll have less stress in your life. You may have a little bit less depression. You have a little bit more control out of who you are. <laughs> you don't ha have to wear a hat to hide anything. You say, hey, like this hat? Bought this in the Bahamas last year. Bought this beautiful hat in the Bahamas. It's something that got real excited I could, I could do. But I had to change my lifestyle, my way of thinking. I had to change the things I was doing in the past and wasting money on, where now I have a little bit more money to enjoy the finer things in life, like a vacation. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up pretty quick for now, but there are products out there that can help you with your anxiety. I mean, I. 
definitely believe in meditation. I believe in prayer. I definitely believe in prayer. But there are other things out there that can help us get rid of some of the pains we have in a natural way. You have yourself a great week. This is In the Office with G.I. Joe Skoda. I look forward to talking to you soon and learning what you're doing for your anxiety. You go back on the second Absolutely. So you have yourself a great day. <laughs> All right. John is an employee at one of the most famous firms in the city of New York. So his job is very hectic, and he realized that it is necessary for him to go and finally take a vacation. But he went on a vacation without planning out the details, and wasn't able to truly enjoy where he went because he had to think about so many things that he didn't plan for. Instead of enjoying his time away from work, he came back with more stress that he was not able to take full advantage of his vacation. But this year, a coworker suggested him to try World Ventures this time to make his vacationing more enjoyable and less stressful. They do not require you to plan anything outside of your transportation, which is also available at discounted rates. Your stay, your transport, and many meals are planned by the club. John liked the idea very much. He tries World Ventures and his experience with the club was amazing as he made many friends there with whom he had a great time. John recommends that everyone should try this club as they are the best in business. See how the VIP-Vacation-Club.com can give you the right experience without all the hassle. Enjoy the VIP experience that only World Ventures provides. Live streaming on social media is the best new way to interact and bond with your community. Do you love to encourage, motivate, and empower others, but you do not know how? Well, your opportunity starts with us on social media shows. We have 20 shows a week live streamed across the globe. With a reach of over 80,000 and growing. So you can host your own show and you can be anything. to in the office with Joseph Skoda or like I announced earlier GI Joe Skoda you know today marks 13 years ago when I retired from the Air Force now I retired from the Air Force obviously I had struggles I had a master's of business an MBA and still couldn't find a job I had uh, three or four other degrees I have a 21 years experience in the military doing so many things but I couldn't quite find my niche and found myself in a depression mode for a while and believe it or not my doctor recommended I go back to school to try to get my mind focused because I was in the woe is me stage you know life isn't good uh, life sucks so I was feeling that way for a while and I got really depressed so I went back to school community college met some great people and my college professor there Marie Comstock I love you uh, told me to continue going to school, but now it's time to really push my brain to the next level. Time to work on not just going to school to go to school, but with a purpose. Now, I was really this close to getting my law degree, that's like she did, but I went to psychology instead. So I worked on my PhD and did that for a long time, a little great self-accomplishment, another degree down and some more experience. Still couldn't find a job that you know. And some of the reasons I could not find a job or career move was because I did not know what to say in an interview. Sure, on paper, I look great. I can almost walk on water. But I still did not know how to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And quite frankly, I didn't know how to talk to a group of more than 10 people anyways. So there were certain skills lacking. And I started my own network marketing company and, you know, joined affiliate marketing and did that for a while and joined this business, net, business networking group 
where I was trying to basically pitch my business. Thinking, hey, everyone's going to love me. They're going to join my business. That wasn't the case. One of the guys in there, Mr. Billy Mitchell, took me to a different meeting. And the other meeting was called Toastmasters. Specifically, South County Presenters Toastmasters in the Royal Grandy, California. Now, that was six years ago. Shy person, didn't want to get in public. If I'm behind a lectern, I'm shaking like this behind a table. Did not want the spotlight on myself. And I was really scared those first several months in Toastmasters. And I stayed for the wrong reasons. I just liked the social. I loved the people there. But I still was afraid to talk. It was probably a year later, I think I got tricked into being a, a vice president of education and then tricked again to being the president. And I found I have a knack for Toastmasters. We're not just about speaking. We're talking about leadership skills and more importantly, relationship skills. Now, Toastmasters has four founding principles. Respect, integrity, service, and excellence. Now, three or four of those are the same core values of the Air Force. Excellence in all we do, service before self. You know, those are great things. Integrity, those are all super visions I believe in. And now that Toastmasters has all that, and now they say respect. Well, I'm in Las Vegas at the moment, and I was celebrating the big accomplishment of District uh, Toastmasters District 115, which today is their first day in business. Now, I don't live in Las Vegas, I live in California, but yesterday, District 115, Las Vegas, Nevada area, belonged to District 33, which is what I'm a part of. So traveling back and forth, going to different events, I got to meet some great people along the way. But as of, as of today, I got elected Program Quality Director, Program Quality Director of District 33. That's number two of the top three. That's huge of thousands of people. All the way from Simi Valley to Modesto, up into Palmdale and all the places in between San Luis Obispo, of course. This was a big deal. But what I found about Toastmasters, sure, I became a better communicator, less fearful, less fearful, got into leadership a little bit more, but probably more importantly, the relationships I developed and as I'm giving awards, accolades, visiting people and asking them how I can help them get the most out of this great organization, that just touches me in a special way. Today I visited a club um, in, in Vegas and met some of my great friends, past um, people like this, past division um, governor, I mean district directors, district governors, Phyllis Tribby, she's awesome. We have Guy Dawson, he was there, he was awesome, and they, of course, were partying with us last night. But I want to give a special shout out to the very first District 115 Director, District Director, Toastmasters uh, District 115, Steve Goldstein. Steve Goldstein, me and him were part of Fabulous Five last year when he was part of District 33, but this year, He's taken to a whole different level, not just leading a huge organization, but leading a new organization. Wonderful. We had the Sergeant Arms, Nadia Gilks, who did her own live streaming last night when we were at the Tuscany, and we had some great conversation, great cake, and champagne. Is there a better way to start any organization than with champagne? I think not. I think not. But what I'm trying to tell you is this little badge means so much to me. I'm not in charge of anyone. People voted on me. People are counting on me. They, they elected me to serve them. And quite frankly, there's no greater honor than someone asking you to serve them. Not necessarily cake or food or give me another beer in the fridge, but to lead and show them the way while they develop their own 
communication and leadership skills. Now I know you might be a teacher, you might talk for a living as a salesperson, but how many times do we hear someone say, um, um, uh, let me um, show them, um, uh, or um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ask about that. You know is a filler word, um is a filler word, ah is a filler word, so is a filler word. Words that we do not need to use in our English language. And when you learn to minimize, or better yet, eliminate those words from your vocabulary, you become more accurate, more distinct, succinct in your communication and people can understand you better. Have you ever said something to your significant other or a good friend and you assume they understand what you're trying to say? And you know, it might have been a dinner choice and they're bringing steak and you said, but I thought we'd stay at home. But it's just those little things, sometimes we do not communicate very well. And I learned in this organization, we're over 140 different countries right now in so many different languages, but I learned that I'm able to communicate stronger and get my message across better. But I must warn you, one of the most important aspects or one of the most important skills that we have in communication is called, that's right, listening. Listening. Us guys usually have a problem with that. We always want to fix the problem. If if our spouse is coming to us or girlfriend or friend and they say, this that, 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 that's going on at work, we just want to get in there and fix it. And that's a fault of a lot of men. I mean, not all the time. Sometimes they need some help fixing something, but they don't always. Often the females in their lives just want us to listen, or even guys too, just want us to listen and maybe give a little empathy. So once we learn how to listen, we can better come up with a solution, a plan, an idea, something that might work for everyone involved. So we learn how to communicate and listen, it's huge. Now here's something else we do in Toastmasters that a lot of us need help with. What happens if someone picks up on, you know, calls you on the phone? I know a caller ID, we usually know who's calling us. But what if it's your boss or somebody you don't talk to very often and we're not sure what they're going to ask us? So we don't know. we just going to be surprised. Hey, uh, can you make it to the game next week? Or can you buy pizza? Or will you join our club? And you don't know how to communicate that quickly, the one to two minutes? We teach a little bit about impromptu speaking. We, we use a, a term called table topics where someone calls upon you and asks you a question that you're not prepared for. It's, it's the idea is to catch you off guard, so you can practice in one to two minutes how to say something coherently, on your feet, off your cuff. You get up there and talk and have to be confident doing so. Because Toastmasters, sure, you have your, your speeches that you prepare for, usually five to seven minute range, some are a little bit longer, but you normally have time to prepare for those. But those table topics, that's where you're caught off guard to really practice those skills. Now one more thing, I talked a little bit about grammar and stuff. And stuff, that's another filler word that we're not supposed to use. But we have an evaluation process. When you're giving one of those five to seven minute speeches, someone's gonna be assigned your evaluator tell you how great you engage your audience, if your hand gestures were appropriate, if your eye contact is where it was supposed to be. And they're also going to point out if you looked at the floor too much, if you clasped your hands too much, didn't use the gestures appropriately, or maybe even used off-color language. So we have those kind of evaluations, not to nitpick, it's to help us become better. And in most cases, you'll take that same speech you gave with your recommendations during the evaluation and give it again at a later time with the improvements. And believe it or not, in a short amount of time, short amount of time, you'll see the improvements in your life. If you don't, the people around you will, I guarantee you. So in a short amount of time, I'm number two in the district. That is huge, six years, and six years ago, I did not even want to be a part of this organization. 
But this has helped me in uh, my district leadership with the American Legion. It's helped me with my district leadership in the Disabled American Veterans. It's helped me be a guest speaker at the Rotary Club, at the Moose, uh, at churches, and so many other places where I get a chance to speak. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I spoke in front of a crowd of over 300 people in Reno, Nevada. Something, there's no way you could have had me do that a few short years ago. And today I say, bring it on. Bring it on, because I'm growing, I'm learning, and we have some, we are the best organizations, some of the best people. I've got a good friend in the group, his name is Kelvin. He lives right here in Las Vegas, and he got a... A, a, a beautiful girlfriend there, and he's just a big guy, a real good presence. And it's so cool, Robin. Robin is his girlfriend, and they're just never say too much. But when he's up there speaking, very eloquent. You look at him, he, he's big, he bumps into things, knocks things over. He's always smiling, never complaining. But when he speaks, you will listen. You will listen. I'm going to just, um, real short, a, a quick story. I went to a club in San Luis Obispo a few years back. And first time I visited. And this guy in the parking lot, uh, 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 are you here, are, are, are you here to, um, to, to, to look at Toastmasters or, or the group? Uh, uh, some, I said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Where is it? Well, um, um, follow, follow me. It's, it's over here. And he stuttered the whole time. He stuttered the whole time. But. He was one of the speakers that day. And this young man, he had to be in his 20s, probably early 20s, spoke so clearly, so eloquently, uh, humorous, full of information, so clear. One of the best speeches I've ever heard, especially from a millennial. <laughs> Let's just tell it like it is. But when he was off the spotlight again, and just sitting back in his chair, went, 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 went back to his stuttering. So for that one hour a week, or that one half hour a week, where he has the opportunity to kind of be the real him, this organization has helped him leaps and bounds. It's helped so many of us to think we know how to speak and how to be clear, but too many of us are stubborn. This does make you better. And you do not have to want to be a public speaker to improve your communication, do you? No. You don't have to want to be a public speaker or do shows like this or go out there and speak in front of crowds. What about talking to your spouse, your, your parents? What about talking to your classmates, your neighbors? Or going to a party and having something to say on a topic you're unfamiliar with? These are certain skills that Toastmasters can help you find. Toastmasters.org, and you go find a club and find one in your area. Hopefully you come join one of us in District 33, out where I live. I look forward to meeting with you and, and, and breaking bread and, and just having fun because we're a great organization that encourages, helps, creates opportunities for others to excel and be the real them. Now you can wear fancy shirts or fancy hats. It doesn't matter. I do a lot of characters in some of my speeches because quite frankly I have so much fun doing it. And it's okay to fall on your face. We all fall on our faces from time to time. But we have a group there that will support us. And it's so super. I want to thank Brian for joining us today. Shout out to Maria. Love you Vanessa. You look great. Hey, D, I'm glad you're there. Mike, Eli, we have so many of us. JC, thank you all for watching this show. Join Toastmaster Club in your area. Don't worry, you can go as a guest a couple times and see what it's all about. But more importantly, we always have to find the right fit for us. Social media shows was the right fit for me. In the office with Joseph Scotta was the right fit for me. The Air Force was the right fit for me. Today, Toastmasters makes me better in all of those other organizations. All I got to do is have you go out there, always work on your self-worth, self and that increases your net worth. Well, you know what I mean. You keep working on yourself, you're worth more, and the money, 
the freedom, the peace will follow. But more importantly, you develop relationships around the world you may never experience any other way. Last year I went to a Chicago International Conference. The year before was in Vancouver, the year before Washington DC, year before Singapore, this year's in Denver, and next year I hope to see you join me in Paris, France as we welcome the world um, champions of public speaking and all the other leaders in this international organization that we affectionately call Toastmasters. One more time, I want to congratulate District 115 for finally launching, launching. This is a huge event. They're launching. They're going on their own. But they have some great, strong leadership in this area. Kay Collis, Sherry Parker, two wonderful leaders helping it go on. So continue each and every one of you to find the leader inside of you and find a way that you too can make a difference. This has been In the Office with Joseph Skoda and I hope to see you soon. A vacation somewhere, um, uh, international group and in somewhere around the world, a Toastmasters club, or right here in sunny Las Vegas. Have a great day. Bye now.